Hello everyone and welcome to DCM, Doritos Connections and Mountain Dew, your favorite local video game show. I'm your host, Howard. I'm your host, David. Let's start off with our first segment. What's our first segment, Howard? All right, so um, I, I guess for some reason we have our, uh, you know, IGN decided to have uh, some 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 beef with the general public. Was was there really anything? Did, like, did, did, did they? Was this prompted by anything? I don't know. All I know is three months ago they had an article. This was three months ago. Hold on. There was an article three months ago explaining the process of how they got so many 7 out of 10. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty decent article, but kind of forgettable. It's just right. basically like, we get people who like these types of games to review these types of games. Uh, it's not monetarily viable to have multiple people review the same games to get different right. perspectives. Right, but that makes sense. This all makes sense. This is all totally fine, by the way. I think this is a totally fine approach. Um, they also can't review every game because there's too many games. So it was kind of just like, you know, like, like uh, they, they, they kind of, I, I still think it's weird that there's so many 7 out of 10s. It's, it does seem like a very arbitrary number at this point. Yeah, because they kind of just treat 7 out of 10 as like the average. Yeah. And thus everyone thinks a 7 out of 10 is an average thing. Which is not how number scaling works. Yeah. Like if, if, if we were to be accurate, that would be 5. Yeah, it'd be 5. 5 would be. But like average, anything under seven's like the bad game. Yeah. Energy. And it was fine. I don't think anyone complained. I don't think anyone did anything. But then they made like a TikTok for Twitter, like a short video, very scripted, with Dan Stapleton. And now we got a problem, ladies and gentlemen. Now, he basically just you know goes on and says. Oh, uh, you know, there was 10,000 games released this year. And it's like, I can't even name 10,000 games. It's like, yeah, so there's no way for us to review it, right? We should, we should name 10,000 games right now. Mega Man 1, Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, Mega Man 4, Mega Man 5, Mega Man 6, Mega Man 7, Mega Man 8, Mega Man 9, Mega Man 11, Mega Man X, Mega Man X2, Mega Man X3, Mega Man X4, Mega Man X5. I'm not going to keep doing that. <laughs> Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3. Final Fantasy 10, Final Fantasy 10, 2, Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 13, 2, fi a Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy 13. <laughs> See, why don't we, why aren't we just working for IGN at this point? We'd be better than them. Ooh. Zynga. Um, so then they said, kind of off-putting, it's like, how do we determine how we review games? Uh, we do it by Google searches. We do it by um, uh, what, what looks good. We do it by how, well, you know, what we do. And it was a very weird way to avoid public, we want, we beg publishers for codes and we get them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why they got to do that. Just say they give us the review codes and we review them. It's not that hard. I, I really I really doubt like you know when when Street Fighter Six is gonna come out IGN is gonna be looking like what are the Google searches for the critically <laughs> acclaimed series Street Fighter's new entry Street Fighter they're gonna review Street Fighter Six this is a no brainer okay so then they said the line now first of all all of this was fine beforehand I would all harmless yeah I would I would say so nothing wrong valid opinions then he said. Why are the scores always a 7 or above? So if people are actually interested in the game and it looks good, most of the time it ends up being good, which is our definition of a 7. 7 means good. Of course there are exceptions, Gotham Knights, but think about it this way. If you've never heard of the game, we probably wouldn't review it, and it probably isn't that good anyway. If you never heard of the game, you we probably didn't play it, and it probably wasn't that good anyway. And to which the scripted person interviewing him in the obviously scripted video said, ah, that makes sense. Does it though? No! Does that really make sense? No! I understand you can't review every game. Yeah, that, that's, that's just feasible. That's just not feasible. You know, it, that doesn't make sense. 
It, it, like, how many, how many, how many critics does IGN have? I, I genuinely don't know. Hold on. The answer is probably not enough. Yes, of course. It's always not enough. Because again, what, what did you say? They, there was like something like two, three thousand games that came out. Ten thousand in twenty twenty. That's it's not feasible to review ten thousand games in one year. Yeah, and it also doesn't help when you divert your resources to review movies at the also game that, studio. Also that. We're not talking about that right now. We're, we're... So what are we saying? Sorry. <laughs> There's not enough people for all the games that are out, mm -hmm. which is totally fine. But to just blatantly said, if you didn't hear it, it wasn't good anyway. Okay, you know what, Dave? Let's just do this. Let's just do this. The year is, let's say, 1990. Okay, I'm listening. The year's 1990. Okay. Right, you're you're and you. Let's just say movie critics all did this, like Cisco yeah. and Ebert, all okay, did, yeah. all of them did it, right? And they said the same exact thing. They did not have the access to information right there, so stupid idiot sees Evil Dead Two and goes, "Wait, they didn't hear that good movie? <laughs> so I guess it's not good anyway." Do you know how if we just applied the same to movies? how absolutely brain dead of a sentence that that Dan, Dan Stapleton said. Like, it, it, at a time where we're flooded with Marvel movies shoved in our faces, mm -hmm. no one knew everything everywhere all at once before it came out. No, that was, that was purely through word of mouth. Purely through word of mouth. But don't worry, if you'd ever heard of it, it probably wasn't good anyway. You know, Oscar award-winning movie that only got through through word of mouth and not critics. Yeah. So, like, that's already stupid. So now let's apply it to games. He made a little list. Just a tiny, tiny little list. It's, it's, it's not extensive. But there's, there's enough there that we can prove IGN wrong. So here's a notable list of games that are either good or IGN was completely late for and only reviewed them when they became popular. All right? Mm -hmm. So not uh, not at all. Dusk, no review. Uh, indie game Demon Turf, it's a platformer, very good. Not there. They did not do Dawn of the Monster. Disappointing, IGN, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you question the lo the logic of one such as me, host of Talking Toku? Shameless plug. In the description below. I'm gunning for you, IGN. Uh, DCME award winner, Faith the Unholy Trinity. Nothing. No review. Not a not a not a single dang thing. Almost all the Five Nights at Freddy's do not have IGN the reviews. The only one was what. Security, Security Breach, Breach, which is the latest and the and the first one to come to to launch on console. Mm -hmm. Signalis did not have one. Nope. Uh, yeah, it took them a year to review Among Us because they waited for the Switch port instead of playing it on PC. Makes no sense. They also, uh, you know, were a month behind reviewing Undertale which leads me to believe they only cared once it got big. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they would have not reviewed it. Our point here, especially on those last two, everyone knows Undertale. Mm -hmm. They were not gonna review Undertale at first until it got big. It was purely bandwagoning. So, let's just use that man's logic. If they didn't hear of Undertale, then Undertale must not be good. Are you high? <laughs> Are you actually high? Like, I, unironically, in video game history, just go and say Undertale's not good. I get it if you don't like the stuff, but like, it's a very influential game. Yeah. That's very popular. I mean, how many indie RPGs post Undertale have just kind of aped a lot of what Undertale did? A good a amount. A lot of them. Yeah, in fact, it brought meta gameplay back more than exactly. Stanley Parable did. So. Stupid take, absolutely dumb. And you know, we we looked up some IGN reviews, and you know what? There's a lot of really bad ones. But I think this is one that Dan Stapleton did himself. He reviewed the Last Prey game. 
he gave it a 4 out of 10 because his save got corrupted. So, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not trying to be like, you know, oh, he's not trustworthy. But if he's just going to be that insulting to games that he's never heard yeah. of. So, so here, here's the thing. Like, I can partially, and when I say partially, I mean it like a very, very small part of me. Partially understand that because it's a review, you're a critic, you're giving, you, you, you are, are talking about your own personal experience with the game. Yeah. However... Having your saved corrupt, while, while it sucks, that's not part of the game. Yeah, that's a bug that you critique. You, you just say, oh yeah, it's kind of buggy. But no, I hated it, because this exact thing happened. And like... Why don't you just play the game and judge that and, and do that? I... But, but yeah, no. I, it, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't know. It, it, I, it's... I'm just saying that like, it, it. This is ridiculous. I know everyone apes on IGN reviews, and we're trying to come at this with a different angle because everyone's like, well, you know, soy jacking. It's like, look, hypocrisy. I mean, it's the meme. IGN bad. But like, I don't think that this is like classic IGN bad. I think that quote is deliberately disrespectful to all indie games no, and most. Is. And most art in general. It legitimately is. Like, like, like you said, you couldn't you could say that about movies and be dumb. You could say about music and be dumb. Yep. It's like, oh, I never heard of Aphex Twins. They guess I guess they're not good. Yeah. Oh, you mean the one of the most influential electronic artists ever made that in the underground scene? Yeah, yeah literally like how many genres of music nowadays survive like subsist solely on their underground scene? Yeah, that's a lot of them. That's how Hundred Gex started. How how many how many thousands upon thousands of underground death metal bands are there? So so many. So many. So many. So like, literally like every every state has their own underground death metal scene. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think gangster rap started? That was all underground. Oh no 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 no! But if we don't review it, it's not good. Yeah. Not yeah. not good. Yeah. So, like, it, it's such a ridiculous premise as a reviewer, which leads me to suspect that he's not, like, the best reviewer. <laughs> he, his, you know, it, it, it's just such a juvenile take. Like, mm -hmm. I would have said that when I was, like, 13. And how old is he? Just, just out of curiosity. Compare and contrast, see how old he is compared to we, us and we'll take his job. <laughs> oh, and for those who don't know who, um, uh, okay, he was born in 1980. Okay. So that would mean he's 40 something. Okay. Now, now, no, and, and to top it all off, he is IGN's director of reviews. He is the head of all the reviews at IGN. With such a juvenile take. That's concerning. It's very concerning. I would, which, since then, IGN has deleted this video and its existence off. They, to the they point like, where, gone. Infin Infinity Gauntlet snapped. Gone. It's gone. But don't worry, I found some dude soy, wo uh, soy wojacking <laughs> enough to steal all the footage. I had to find pieces of the video you saw. I had to... Find it in someone's reaction video. Because they wiped this clean. There's like no, that's like the only remnant of it on the internet. Yeah, at the moment. At the moment. But I'm, yeah. Yeah. Silly, pathetic, dumb. Um, and, and of course, try, try better not being juvenile with art. Uh, hey, Howard. You know, when is the last time we bullied uh, Activision Blizzard? Oh, as of recording. Uh, it feels like it's been a while. That's why I'm asking. Oh, um, two weeks ago. That's long enough. Long enough. Hey, guys, guess what? <laughs> Remember Overwatch 2? And how the whole point of having a No, game? no one does because no one plays it. <laughs> 
But right now, the whole point of Overwatch 2 was to have a single player campaign in which you had like an RPG skill tree. I didn't know that was actually supposed to be part of it. Oh, hell yeah. Oh. So that way the people, so that way everyone played different in the single player campaign oh, okay. than the multiplayer campaign. That makes sense. Yeah, I know. What a cool idea. It'd be a shame right. if, hold on, stay with me. Not only is it not there at launch, they just decided to cancel it's it. It's done. Goodbye. Yep. So, so I, you might be thinking, Howard, David, is would, doesn't that mean that Overwatch 2 is just pretty much the same as the first Overwatch? And to that I say, yes. It is. Yes, it is. Literally the same game. Literally the same game. So we actually have, uh, so during a Twitch stream about Overwatch 2's content roadmap, produ executive producer Jared, I'm not saying that last name, it's going to be on screen. Let me, let me see. I'm going to guess Naus? Neos? Maybe, Elemental Hero Neos. Uh, I'm gonna say noose or noise. Noise, nice. All right. Explain the decision to cut the PVE com uh, content. I'll have. I'll, I'm gonna say the quote. I'm gonna be professional for once. <laughs> Development on the PVE experience has not really made the progress that we had hoped. The team has created a bunch of amazing content, so there's awesome missions that are really exciting. There's brand new enemies that are super fun to fight and truly great and ridiculous hero talents. But unfortunately, the effort required to put all that together into a Blizzard quality experience. That's a funny joke. <laughs> that we can ship to you is huge. There's no end in sight or, or defined kind of end date that we can put out to the world. Now, first of all, I understand things get cut yeah. when they put on the cutting room floor. However, when it's the main selling point of your game, that's it, yeah. Literally the first thing that they even said, like one of the first things. Yeah. And they said, we don't have enough time to finish it. Why did you release it? Why did you release the game? I don't even understand. Because the same thing. They, they, were, they, had to do, they had to do something to get the, the uh, heat off their backs. Yeah. Because they probably because they did something bad, most likely. Whatever. I, I, I'm sure it was something. I just, but it's, at this point, there's been so many bad things they've done that they've covered up with Overwatch 2 stuff that I, I've lost track. Yeah it's, yeah, it's almost as if Overwatch 2 was made because they had no other games because they keep canceling all their games because they don't want to release games. Mm -hmm. So they announced Overwatch 2 as a way to distract us from something terribly inhumane. That's still being investigated, by the way. Mm -hmm. So, I this is... This is so essentially it's gonna the PVE is gonna go back to the same way it was in Overwatch 1, where there's going to be seasonal content with generic waves and a la TF2. So again, literally the same game. Yeah. Uh, oh, and don't worry. Um, they're, they're not adding another hero until after summer. Oh. So the second Good. or third hero in the game since it came out is being added? Because I'm trying to remember, how many new characters did they have when the game launched? Other than the little ninja girl. There's like one or two? I think, yeah, I think two. I think literally I mean, two. Granted, it's still a large roster, but the fact that you only introduced two new characters a Junker Queen, whatever. There was Junker Queen. There was, I think Baptiste is new. Okay. He's just some old guy. No, literally no one cares about the yeah. dudes in Overwatch. Why would you ever care about the dudes in Overwatch? Yeah. Why would you ever care about the robots in Overwatch? No, it, we all know why people play Overwatch, okay? Shut up. Then uh, I like the design of the, ro of the robots. They're kind of interesting. I know, but no one cares. I know. Uh, the Ninja Girl. Echo was added into the base game. Yeah. Which then said, you know, what's the point? Uh, yeah, just those three. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Good job. Oh, don't worry. They just added Life Weaver for a game that came out in 2022. They added a new character in <laughs> April to hide the fact that they got sued. It never ends, does it? 
Yeah, no, there's never any pos- Like, I'm sorry if you're a fan of Overwatch 2, but you are not taking any W's other than maybe- What fans of Overwatch 2? I ain't, I ain't gonna get an angry comment. I ain't saying stuff. I ain't saying anything. I got an I'll comment. say it, because I'm not the one who looks at the account. I have access to it. He's had access for a whole year and a half, and he's never looked once. No. Nope. Which is the amount of confidence I wish I had. <laughs> I'm just going to stay blissfully ignorant. <laughs> oh, what's that? Someone's talking trash? Well, they're probably stupid because they're talking to me on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Sucks to suck. Yeah. Chris, don't point up. So what, how, how, how long... All right, so here's the question then. Do you think they will do an Overwatch 3? And do you think this exact same thing will Dude, happen? Dude, they're gonna find out, they're gonna like actually release like Epstein Splight Logs. <laughs> and they're gonna find half of Activision Blizzard staff genuinely went there. And then literally and within then the next hour- we're gonna get hour, Overwatch 3 announcement. Dude, they're gonna do it so bad, they're oh gonna skip God. to Overwatch 4, all right? <laughs> I'm gonna get Overwatch 3. <laughs> Overwatch 3 and 4 come out tomorrow. Which, I mean, you know what? I should probably put this caveat. We're not gonna blame the developers on this one one bit. Every single piece of evidence we find is corporate mingling mm -hmm. on the product. So it's not the developer's fault at all in this situation from what I can gather. Okay. It's all basically the developers make something and then, you know, uh, you know the, uh, the man comes in with a cigar and, you know, uh, comes in and goes, I want you to put a teddy bear in and then walks away. <laughs> And they're like, well, we got to put the teddy bear in now. And as they're putting the teddy bear together, he goes, I want you to have a mode that has where you fight a giant kaiju. And then he walks away. And they go, but what about the teddy bear? Huh? Yeah, 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 make it done. And then he walks. Yeah. And it's basically how Overwatch 2 has been. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, no point of Overwatch 2. Oh, wait, hold on, Dave. I also forgot to mention, oh, no. with every bad piece of Activision Blizzard news, guess which positive news came out? Did you get a new character? No. Uh... Activision oh. Blizzard announces it's Pride Month uh, merchandise. But it's not Pride Month. And also they have multiple sexual abuse cases. <laughs> but Howard, it's not Pride Month. Yeah, I know. That's next month. I know. Do you think Blizzard knows that? No, they just saw bad news and they just hit send on the drafted tweet. They have these like archived, like, oh, you know, General do. Grievous with the lightsaber. So whenever they see the bad news, they <laughs> open up their cape and pick something and just throw a dart and it hits mm -hmm. send on Twitter. Yeah. Like, like they just have things prepped, right? They have things prepped. Okay. That makes, that makes sense, actually. Yeah. I, 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 I think I can see that happening. Exactly. The case. Yeah. You know which person we haven't actually bullied in a while because it's just kind of pathetic to bully them at this Who? point? Microsoft. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sad at this point. But it, you know it's what? It's a bit sad. But we're about to do the, another kick to the gut. We're, um, we're, we're going to do it anyways. Because that's the way All for roll. you. For the content. For you. Yeah. You're making us do this. <laughs> You're enabling us to bully other people. You're the problem. Oh, I'm gonna have to talk to my therapist. I think this means I have to go. <laughs> I have to break off this. This is too much it's harsh vibes. It's a toxic relationship. Toxic relationship with you people. Oh. Parasocial, some might say. <laughs> Disgusting. Um, just kidding. Um, so uh, the 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 new hit game Redfall. That's game, that's that is a way to describe it. A game that which I've heard literally almost no one really care about. Because I don't think anyone has ever wanted Arcane Studios to make a Left 4 Dead ripoff no. about vampire no. hunting. No. No one wanted that. I, listen, I love Arcane. I like the Dishonored games. I love Prey. I haven't, play, I haven't played Deathloop yet. But I love them. No even one wanted when, this. E even when this game got announced, I was like, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't care. Yeah. I yeah. don't care. Like, oh, I cannot boy. find myself to care. Let's get the team that makes mainly single-player games. To, to, to do a, a four-player co-op game. Yeah, you know, because that makes total sense. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, so we're going to ignore the fact how apparently this game started development before the Xbox merger or whatever, in which Microsoft promised all games in development would go to PlayStation, which I don't think that's what it meant. I think all games that were contractually obligated to go on both mm -hmm. will still be contractually obligated to go to both. Um, so whatever, all right? First things first, game $70. Yep. Disgusting. No games are worth $70. I'm sorry, I don't care anymore. There's no argument, and it's getting more and more... Like, if it was $70 for a $60 game and $10 for the physical version, $60 for digital, I get it. Mass-producing I mean, I physical I don't really things. I, I can even... I, like, I get it. I don't like it, but mm -hmm. I get it. Okay. It's at least understandable, right? Because you have to pay for the plastic, the store, you know, pay... You have to pay money to be on a store shelf. Right. I get it. Right? There's a lot of cost that goes into physical versions. And you know what? I think we've hit the point of realistic graphics, so the realistic graphic angle isn't going to sell me. Well, Arcane never really does the realistic. They always I just mean for in general, for okay. like $70 price oh, okay. The high graphics doesn't impress me. The content length doesn't impress me. All right? I don't care. Because you don't need both of those. You just need a solid game. So first of all, so, so this game's $70 in the wake of multiple studios saying, our game costs $70, and then I play it, and I say, go, I can't even tell the $10 difference, to be honest. <laughs> I, I just played Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and as I'm playing, I go, I don't see where the extra $10 went to, officer. No. You know, I don't think it worked for, you know, a lot of games, to be honest, but... Then we get to the next issue, Dave where the game was running at 60 frames per second in all trailers, all gameplay demos. Mm -hmm. And then on the box, in the physical versions, everyone noticed it said 30. And they then they said, we're going to add the 60 frames per second later. I, I still do not understand how that works. I don't understand how that works. I don't understand how that happened. And I think it's embarrassing for Microsoft with their powerhouse console mm -hmm. to have a first party title that's not only not 60 frames per second, or even have an option for 60 frames per second. Yeah. It has to be patched in. Patched in. I, I, I did. Uh, is that so much? Like, like, I'm not asking for 64K. I'm asking <laughs> for just 60 frames a second. No. It's too much work. Too much work. Now, uh, I'm not one of those guys like, uh, anything under, you know, 60 is completely unplayable because, you know, I, I've been playing old games. Yeah. 30 is fine. You just, don't, you just want it to have be consistent, right? Because I don't see any of you frame rate motherfuckers over Legend of Zelda, the new one. I don't see any of you for that. Everyone likes it. Shut up, frame rate people. But it is incredibly embarrassing that you have footage at 60 frames per second and it's not there. At that, at that point, it's just a little bit of false advertising, I feel. A you know. little bit, a little, 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 little sus. Little Can sauce. we sue? No, because I think on the bot, whatever the box says is ah, like 100% official. Damn. I don't know the legal terms. I'm not a lawyer. Don't trust me. Call Saul Goodman. Um, now we get to the release. That was broken. It's broken. Mm -hmm. Now we're recording. A I don't. I don't think I have seen a single clip of Redfall where anything was working as intended. Yeah, I've seen so many things of models not loading, textures not loading. All the AI just is not even close to being smart. Yeah, there was a boss that just stood in the corner of the room and just let it get shot. And apparently, yep. it's like like an end of chapter boss. It's not good. Now, I'm not going to look at the substance of the gameplay because everyone says the gameplay is fine when it okay. works. Well, when it works. But the issue is when it works. So we have a $70 game on launch that doesn't work. Where did the $10 go? <laughs> Where did it go? God, you're, you're really... I up on this $10 difference. Because if it's 10 extra dollars, then it better work. That's, that's, you know, that's fair. That's fair. If it, 
if it's 60 and it doesn't work, I'm mad. If you have the balls to look me in the eye and say, we spent too much money making this game, give us 10 more dollars. And I look at your game and there's a vampire T-posing and he's the final boss. Where did my extra money go? Where did it go? Dave, do you even know? Um, I took it. Did you get me anything with it? Um, I mean, the, the, the Grubhub order should be here soon. Oh, no, no, we're good. We're good. But points still stay. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but like, it's, it's a ridiculous notion. Like, I'm mad that the game doesn't work. Trust me. But I'm even more mad at the fact you have to pay more money for it to not work. <laughs> Like, that's not a good deal. No, no, uh, not, not, not even close. <laughs> like, it's, it's not in the least a good deal. And again, to reiterate, why is Arcane making multiplayer games? I, I, I mean, they toyed with it in Deathloop. When I say toyed with it, I mean they had an option to do, like, a multiplayer thing. You didn't have to have that on all the time. And I'm pretty sure for a while this game had online DRM oh, that right. was implemented. I think, and I think they right. took it out. That's yeah. why they delayed it one time. Mm -hmm. So it's like... It, it's just not good. It's just not good. The, the moral of the story is it's kind of cringe, bro. This game's kind of cringe. Just, just a little bit. Um, don't release $70 broken games because you're not proving your point with $70 no. games. No, I, and I get it. Like, you got deadlines. Christ. You got, you got deadlines. I get it. I, you spend a lot of money. I get it. And you don't want to do crunch, I understand. They yeah. probably did do crunch anyways, because they were, what AAA studio doesn't have crunch? Yep. And then we got Phil Spencer to do a big old apology tour about it. which Didn't you know, he admit that it sucked too? Yeah, because apparently Xbox is like, you know, Rick Rubin when it comes to music, where he just has a developer, the developer comes up, we're going to make this game, Microsoft says, cool. And then they just step away and let him make the yeah. game. That's how we got things like Hi-Fi Rush, mm -hmm. which everyone liked. But that is now also how we got games like Redfall, in which for some reason, they didn't step in to go, hey guys, this is completely broken. Yeah. <laughs> this just doesn't work. Uh, yeah, and he's upset. Yeah, hold on. There's a really good quote. I actually, I, I actually do like it. I don't think it's a direct quote, but it's essentially what he said is, he defends developers' creative freedom, but admits the game was not the quality spans should expect. Okay. Which, again, solid. But Microsoft is like a dumpster fire at the moment mm -hmm. when it comes to their exclusives. Because they just kind of come out. Yeah. They barely advertise it. And then guess what? No one cares. Right? And guess what? Uh, everyone, they, they kept pushing Redfall. How many times was Redfall shown at an award show? Many. And guess what? Broken. It was there was a lot of money into put into the marketing. That was like the games. final game at their conference at E3, yeah. the last yeah. time they had it. That was the that was the big game next to Starfield. They think this game was as big as Starfield. Womp womp. Note, I am going to insult Starfield when it comes out because it looks not good. But that's beside the point. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, I cannot believe that this was even allowed. Do we just not have QA testers anymore? Is that just a thing? I guess not. We just stopped I, doing? I guess not. Is that just, we just stopped doing that? That's cool, bro. Cool Hire thing. us to be QA testers. And then we have QA testers saying, you know, guys, it's not just about playing video games. It's like, uh, yeah, duh, yes. it's about playing video games with a notepad next to you, yeah. idiot. I'm playing video games getting paid for it. Yeah, I'm going to get video games, and I'm going to get paid. And then I'm going to say, hey, uh, I don't think this is how it works. I'm playing Jedi Survivor, and I jump, and uh, now I'm in the sky, and I can't go back down. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, oh, interesting. And then they just throw my notes into a yeah. trash can. <laughs> 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 that is not how QA testing works. I'm making it up. Please don't get mad. It's not. I think I'm <laughs> How do we end the I don't show? Know. <laughs> I don't know. The show. How do we ever? It's always like pretty like abrupt. I feel it is really abrupt. I mean, we could just end the show like this. Goodbye. Bye.
say this was a stupid idea. 